Legends of LEDs and fabulous and brilliant LED display programming circuit Pythonistas. It's Professor Gallagher, and in this lesson, I'll show you how to wire a standard Hub 75 LED matrix to a Raspberry Pi Pico. The wiring's identical regardless of the Pico version you're using, and I'll show you some scrolling text and image code so that you can try things out on your own. Let's make something awesome. And a reminder to newcomers, welcome! My entire university course on CircuitPython programming with tons of lessons and projects can be found free to all online at buildwithprofg. Check it out! Now I'll be showing you a way to set up any Hub75 display with a Raspberry Pi Pico. Hub75 is a standard way of connecting RGB LED matrix panels. Think those bright LED signs that you see in shop windows. Now Hub75 isn't a display type, it's the name of the connector and wiring standard used to control the panel. You'll see these in squares. These are squares with 32 and 64 lights. Or rectangles, these are 64 by 32 versions. And you can also daisy chain hub displays together if you're using a powerful enough microcontroller and your code isn't too taxing. Now when you buy one of these boards, they almost always come with a Hub75 ribbon cable so that you can connect multiple displays together if your board is powerful enough. We won't be using the ribbon cable, but we will be using this four pin power ground cable with its horseshoe shaped power and ground leads. Now in this build, I'm going to use an original Raspberry Pi Pico W board, not even a Pico 2, so that you can get a sense of what's possible even with a low-end board. And we're going to be plugging this into a breadboard so my Pico has headers, and we'll also be using 15 individual pin socket jumper wires, a breadboard, a terminal block to barrel jack power adapter, and we'll attach this to a 5 volt power supply with a barrel plug. Now first, a bit of advice. If you're starting from scratch and you don't have a Pico, breadboard, 15 individual pin socket jumper wires, a 5 volt barrel jack power supply, and a terminal block to barrel jack adapter lying around, it probably makes more sense just to buy an Adafruit Matrix Portal S3 board. Now if you shop online, you'll see that there is a Matrix Portal M4, but get the S3. Despite the fact that the number 3 is smaller than 4, the S3 board is newer, more powerful, and it's actually $5 cheaper. So this is the easiest and probably the cheapest way to go. The reason for this is if you get the Matrix Portal S3, you won't have to do any breadboard wiring. You'll also be able to power your board and your LED matrix off of a single cable coming out of the matrix board. Plug that into a 5 volt cell phone style power supply and you should be good to go. The Pico setup I'm going to be showing you requires two power supplies, one for the LED matrix and one for the Pico. But wait, there's more! In addition to being super easy to set up, the Matrix Portal S3 board also has a bunch of other features built in too. It's Wi-Fi capable, it's got a built-in Stemma QT connector so you can add all sorts of sensors, inputs, or other parts, again, without lots of soldering or breadboarding. It also has an accelerometer, two onboard buttons, and more. So if the Matrix Portal S3 is both a better deal and easier to use and set up, why would you want to wire your LED display to a Raspberry Pi Pico? Well, in my case, I have students that are already working with Raspberry Pi Picos. We've got most of the other parts that we need on hand, so I wanted to show my students how they could get things working with the boards they had in our classroom. So again, this is what you'll need. A Hub 75 capable LED matrix. I'm using a 64 by 32 version that I got from AliExpress. A bit of a warning with that. When I can, I buy from Adafruit. Their parts are thoroughly tested, reliable, high quality, and well supported. But the AliExpress boards can be temptingly low priced if you're buying in bulk like I had to do for my class with a very limited budget. Just make sure that you've got a good manufacturer. I've had to send some of my Ali boards back because they didn't work as advertised. You'll also need a Pico with headers, any variety will do. We're going to plug that into a breadboard, so you'll need that. You'll need 15 pin socket wires, sometimes called male-female wires, although I think that reference is kind of creepy. To power the LED display, I used a 5 volt 2 amp power supply with barrel jack and a female power adapter with screw terminal blocks. Now this allows you to screw in the horseshoe ends of the ground power cable that comes with your LED display. And if you got a Pico, you probably already have a micro USB cable and a mobile phone style USB power supply, but if not, get those too. So there are lots of ways you can connect your Hub 75 LED matrix to your Raspberry Pi Pico. In this lesson, I'll walk you through one simple, reliable wiring setup that works great for a 64 by 32 panel. Regardless of what you do, you'll need to go from this socket. So you can find it on the back of your board facing you in this orientation. There should be an upward pointing arrow, and with your board in this orientation, it should be the socket closest to the left side. Now you'll also need to match each pin in this socket with specific wires on the Pico. To do that I chose 10 inch jumper wires with sockets on one end and pins to plug into the breadboard on the other end. You might hear the socket referred to as the female end and the pins referred to as the male end. The industry is changing to socket and pin, but if you see male, female, now you know what it means. 
Now I decided on this wiring mechanism because it leaves pins GP4 and GP5 free. Now those are the standard pins used for STEM QT add-ons like capacitive touch, temperature sensor, and distance sensors. We have a bunch of those in our course. If you don't know what that's about, you can ignore it, or if you're curious, you can see an earlier lesson. Now the colors of wires don't matter. You can use whatever colors you have. I'm just sharing mine in case you want to follow along. Now this first set of RGB pins, R1, G1, and B1, control the top half of the display, row 0 through 15. RGB produce a mix of colors, red, green, and blue, which can produce just about any color in the spectrum. So I wired R1 to GP2, G1 to GP3, and B1 to GP6. And then there's a second set, R2, G2, and B2, which controls rows 16 through 31. So R2 goes to GP7, G2 goes to GP8, and B2 goes to GP9. Now this one pin across from B2 is left empty in this build. No worries, that's totally normal. Now A, B, C, and D pins are binary row selectors. They control which rows are being updated. Again, you don't have to worry about that at all in your code, so you can forget about what they mean if you want to, but I wired A to GP10, B to GP16, C to GP18, and D to GP20. Now if you are using the 64x64 64 64 panel, you will need to wire the empty pin, that would be E, but those displays push the limits of what a Pico can handle. I'd recommend sticking with a 64x32 max for now, but if you do upgrade, you can always ask AI for updated wiring and code. And finally, we've got what are called the timing pins. These make sure that everything runs smoothly. So CLK stands for clock, and that goes to GP11. It moves the pixel data in step by step. LAT or STB stands for latch or strobe, which goes into GP12, and this locks the pixel data in after each row. And OE stands for output enable, that goes to GP13 in my wiring scheme, and this is like a switch that turns the rows on or off. The lower right is your second ground pin, and again, that can go to any Pico ground. Now together, these wires control how the pixels appear in your matrix. The board scans rows extremely fast. So what's happening here is it's actually updating just a few of the rows at a time. You can see this if you ever try to take a photograph of the display, and sometimes it shows up on video too, you'll only see a portion of the display lit up. This happens so quickly that your eyes and brain don't process the flicker and the image looks solid. Now even though we have a lot of pin assignments, the only time we need to deal with the specifics of these pins in our code is during our initial configuration setup. There'll be one part in your code where you tell CircuitPython which pins to use. I'll point that out in our code. Don't stress about memorizing this. You can refer back to this part of the lesson, take a screenshot, or just copy the pin set up in your code. You'll be good to go. Now in addition to wiring our Pico to our LED matrix, we also have to power the LED matrix display. That's what this cable's for. You should see a red wire for power and black for ground. Take the shoehorned end at the end of the black cable and push that into the port that's labeled minus for ground. Tighten it up with a screwdriver, then do the same with the red cable, attaching that to the plus port. I like to cover any metal with electrical tape for some extra safety. And now on the other end of the cable, you'll see two identical plastic connectors. You've got two connectors so that you can also use this to chain a second LED display to the power supply. We only need one of these ends to plug in. It doesn't matter which one we choose. And you can ignore the other one. You can just tape it behind your display if it gets in the way. But with the plug you've chosen, it's going to connect to this four pin connection. It's probably labeled power. Line it up so that the black wires go into the GND side and the red wires are going to go into the other side. It's probably labeled VCC for voltage common collector. That's the plus or power red wire. And you'll see a small tab on the back of this plastic plug that should go over the lip on the display's connector. Push it in. You might hear a bit of a snap. You can try to tug it out. It should be in snug and aligned properly. Then you can take the plug adapter with the shoehorn connections. And on the opposite end of the terminal connections, there is a barrel socket. You can plug that socket into the barrel end of your power supply, then plug your power supply into an outlet. Then it's time to plug the micro USB cable into your Pico and the other end into your computer's USB port. Now I'm going to assume that everybody following this lesson already has a Pico board with the latest version of CircuitPython installed appropriate for that board. If not, you can see an earlier video in the Pico School playlist on how to set that up. I'm going to assume everyone here knows the basics. Now I've also got a GitHub repo set up with everything you need. So to find that, open a browser and enter the URL github.com slash Gallagher, my last name has a U in it, slash Pico dash and dash hub 75 dash LED dash matrix. And I also have this link in the video's description. Now when you head to that link in the browser, you'll see all the files and folders used in this project and a readme file. The readme includes a video demonstration of the code and a list with links to the various parts that I've used. You'll also see a wiring diagram along with a photograph of the build all wired up. Now we're going to download all the files and folders in this repository or repo, and to do that we simply click and hold down on the green code button and select download zip. 
My browser asks me where I want to save this. If yours doesn't, it's probably downloading this to your downloads folder. So find the folder you downloaded. It might be a zip file, and if it is, double click it to unzip it. My browser unzips it for me automatically. And you should end up with a folder that begins with Pico and Hub75 that we just downloaded. So let's take a look inside that folder. And code.py is the program that's going to run the display. Fonts is a folder with the bitmap fonts that I use in the code. Graphics is a bunch of images that you can use. These are 32 by 32 icons in the BMP format. You can add your own icons as long as they're 32 by 32 BMPs. The code I'm going to show you currently just uses the tools and Raspberry Pi logos, but you can explore the other ones if you want. The LIB folder needs to contain two folders, Adafruit underscore bitmap underscore font and Adafruit underscore display underscore text, plus the file Adafruit underscore ticks.mpy. Now, even though I have this LIB folder in here, I don't advise that you drag that over to your CircuitPy volume. Instead, I advise you to get the very latest versions of these folders and file. Those of you who've been following the course probably know how to use CircUp to automatically install the latest version of any library that code.py will need. But if you're old school, you can just download the latest version of the CircuitPython library files from circuitpython.org and drag over these two folders in one file. So I'm going to drag over code.py and the fonts folder and graphics folder. Now, if you don't have much space left on your Pico, you might need to delete any unneeded files and folders. And you should also replace code.py when you copy that over. Now to deal with the libraries, I'm going to do things the easy way with CircUp, as my students have learned. We're going to open up our PyCharm software and open the code.py file. We'll get into the terminal. And at the percentage prompt, I'll enter circup space install dash A and press return. And this takes a look at our code.py file, finds out the libraries that we need, and will automatically find those versions over the internet and install those on our CircuitPy volume in our LIB folder. So I've opened the CircuitPy volume, that's our board in the LIB folder. Now I've got those two folders and that file that I wanted. Nice. Now once you have all the files on your board, you should see everything running. Some groovy randomly placed fireworks, followed by a congratulations maker message surrounded by tool icons. And a second message scrolls by saying, you built it, surrounded by Raspberry Pi logos. And the fireworks and the messages repeat. Now, if you want to perform some basic changes to this code, let's look at the code. I'll open it up in PyCharm, since that's what my students use. But you can open the code up at code.circuitpython.org or whatever other code editor you use. Want to learn to use PyCharm, which I think is the best Python editor, even though it takes a while to set up? Well, of course, I've got a video lesson for that in our CircuitPython School playlist. Check it out if you want to. But let's look at the key parts of this code. Now I'll just show you the major parts of the code. So you can see I've got two lines that are commented out here. This actually shows how you could set up the configuration for the matrix portal S3. Again, that's a lot easier to set up, but I've got that commented out because these lines down here are for setting up the Pico that we just used. And you can see this is where we define which physical pins on the Pico are connected to the LED matrix signals. And this lets us set up our LED matrix display, which we simply call display. Now I currently am using two fonts in our code, but if you want to find, download, and experiment with other .bdf fonts, you can try that. Just make sure that they're in the fonts folder that's in your CircuitPy volume. If you want to learn more about fonts in CircuitPython, Adafruit's got a great guide for that. Now I've also created a bunch of color variables that you can experiment with if you'd like. I use those in the fireworks. And the messages value that you see here is where I set up scrolling. It's just a list called messages. Each message contains a tuple. It starts with two strings. If there's only one string, the second one is an empty string, then you just see one message that's centered vertically. But if you have something other than the empty string in the second string, you'll see two messages, one on top of the other, scrolling out at the same time. The third parameter is where you'll find the image that shows before and after the scrolling message. And the last parameter is the color of the text. You can add or remove messages just by adding or removing elements. Just make sure that you set them up with the same format. They're tuples, so they should be inside parentheses with a comma after the end. And folks, that's pretty much it. So feel free to customize this if you'd like. Feel free to explore the code if you'd like to learn more. I hope you found this useful. Please drop me a like, that would help me out. And if you build a cool display, Post a video or an image of it to Blue Sky. Each week I send out stickers for free anywhere in the world to a random user that I select who posts a project that they've built from our lessons. Just make sure you at me and use the hashtag builtwithprofg. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because there's always new projects and lessons posted online, all designed to help you make something awesome.